Hey guys, in today's video, I'm gonna to touch on sewing with specialty knit fabrics. So those would be the types of fabrics um, that you'll see Lycra knit blends for swim and dance type um, garments, or sweater knits, which are pretty loosely woven. They look knitted, but you buy them as yardage. So you can cut out your pattern pieces like a hoodie or sweatshirt, and you can make them with a sweater knit, but you have to use something, some sort of stabilizer, or interfacing, or even lace um, around the edges so that they don't fray before you even get them sewn together. So let's jump on over to the machine and I'll show you my tips and techniques for working with specialty knit fabrics. In this example, we're using a Lycra knit fabric and I have an example here of the Liberty Jane rash guard top that's already sewn that's using the same fabric here, it's in red. On this top, you can see we have a few different things going on here. Down on the hemline, we've done a single fold hem with a zigzag stitch. And then on the seam lines, we've done, they're sewn together, right sides together, and then when it's opened up, it's top stitched with a decorative stitch that you can see in the pattern. I've shown which one it is, but you can pick either a zigzag or a different type of decorative stitch that helps the seam lay flat, but it also gives it that look of a swim, wetsuit kind of rash guard look. So this fabric sometimes can cause some frustration. It has a sheen on it and it's, it's pretty thin, but it also can be hard for the needle to go through. So I have a few pieces cut out here and we have a couple different types of needles. We have a stretch needle and a ballpoint needle and I'll show you both on the machine and you can see which version works better with this particular type of fabric. So here we have a single needle in the machine, it's a stretch needle. We have our regular presser foot, two pieces of the swim fabric. They're pinned right sides together and I'm just gonna sew and we can see how this goes uh, from the beginning. So this actually went pretty well, but you can see right here that I started a little bit in from the edge just with the hope that it wouldn't jam and I could back stitch, but I still really wasn't able to go all the way back. So this one did work fine and it does still have a little bit of give, which is fine because this is just all close. So you don't need a bunch of stitch in your vertical stitching on the side seams. Here the machine is threaded with a single needle. This is a ballpoint needle and I have my regular presser foot. So we're just gonna feed this in right at the beginning of the seam allowance. Here we have that seam sewn and it actually looks pretty good. We have a little bit of bunching at the end right there, but it sewed the whole seam fine. There's no puckering. The thread looks pretty even. The stitches are pretty even. No skipped stitches. So that is with a ballpoint needle. Here we have the machine threaded with a single stretch needle and our regular presser foot and I have a hem pressed along the bottom edge of this swim fabric. So this is going in the direction of the most stretch on the fabric, which is where you are likely to have the most issues. So I'm just going to try to do um, a few different style hems and you can just see the difference with the different needles. So this one is uh, just a straight hem, single fold on the fabric and I'm just using a straight stitch. Now that looks pretty good. It's not really puckered. This material sews fairly well. Um, it just doesn't allow for a lot of stretch because it's a straight stitch. Now if we switch to a zigzag stitch, I'm gonna do it from the wrong side so I can be sure to cover the raw edge of that hemline. So I have that lined up right in the middle. Now 
and you can see how that sews right over the edge so it's a nice finished edge on the inside and then on the outside so if it's a contrasting thread it'll stand out a lot if you use a thread that's the same color as the fabric it'll blend in but still provide a texture along the hemline and then this one allows for much more stretch without the threads breaking. This is an example of sewing with sequined fabric. Now for this example, I've taken just a basic tank top and knowing that the sequined fabric will be really hard to try to hem a neckline or hem around the arms or anything like that, I've chosen for this one to just cut a full second set of the pieces out of a very lightweight knit fabric. So they're the same pieces cut out. So we'll line it with the knit and then that way the neckline, the arm holes and the hemline are all sewn just with right sides together. And then once you turn it right side out, your tank top will look really cute and be finished well without having any problems with the hemline. This also works great for a sweater knit fabric. So here we have the Liberty Jane cropped sweater and this one is a sweater knit and it has long sleeves and it's fully lined with a lightweight knit fabric. So once you sew all these pieces together, including the sleeves, you turn it right side out and you're left with a shirt that just needs to be finished on the back opening, either with snaps or some, some type of closure. So the only open seam on this whole entire pattern is one side seam. And then you just hand sew that shut. So we have all the finished seams, the hem, the neckline, and the sleeve hems. They're all sewn before you turn the shirt right side out. So this is a great pattern. Um, it allows you to really uh, use a lot of fabrics that you might be afraid to work with, either a sweater knit or a sequined fabric. So to do this shirt and line the tank top, we'll just start by sewing the shoulder seams on both the sequined fabric front and back and the knit fabric front and back. And then I'll show you on the machine how to sew them together. I have the machine threaded with a single needle and this is just the stretch needle and I have my sequin fabric, it's right sides together. And these sequins are pretty delicate so the strength and size of this needle is fine as is. If you have larger sequins, you'll wanna make sure that you kind of have them trimmed back inside this seam allowance so that it doesn't break the needle. So we're just gonna go ahead and sew the shoulder seams of the sequined fabric on both sides. Then we're gonna go ahead and sew the shoulder seams on the lining fabric. And I'm gonna sew this with a tiny bit more than a quarter inch seam allowance, just so that when it's turned right side out, the lining is pulled under and the sequin fabric rolls a little bit under along the hemlines. Now that we have both the fabric and the lining sewn at the shoulder seams, we're just gonna lay them flat and with right sides together, line them up. So we have the right sides together and we've pinned the neckline, center back, the hemline along the back, the arm's eyes, and the bottom of the front hem. Now we're gonna stitch all those places. The only part that's left open will be the side seams for turning it right side out. Once you have all the edges sewn, 
you're just going to clip into these curves along the neckline and the curve, the tight curve along the arm's eye. And then we'll turn it right side out by pushing the back through to the front. So there we have one back side pulled through and you can see then here's the shoulder seam and here's the arm seam. And we'll go ahead and just pull the other side through. Now you can see this shirt turned right side out. So once you have it to that point, you can finish with the rest of the pattern instructions, which would just be to lay it right sides together and then just sew down the side seam. And you can zigzag those edges first and then sew a straight stitch, or you can sew a straight stitch and then finish it off by zigzagging it. Here's the finished tank top. So you can see the neckline there. If I turn it, you can see the knit on the inside and then the arms. So they're all sewn on the inside. So you can see that it was turned right side out. So then the only seam that's left is the side seam, which has just been straight stitched and zigzagged. And here it's with a different color thread just so that you can see it. But if you've done this on your serger or on a standard sewing machine in the same color thread, it would blend in nicely. And then you can just finish the back with a few snaps or a piece of hook and loop tape like Velcro.